Good morning and welcome to Sunday School. Can you tell me about a time you disobeyed a parent, teacher, or coach this week? Disobedience is sin and we all struggle with sin. Today we're going to hear a story about two men who disobeyed God and faced the consequences of their sin. But first, I want to tell you a little bit about the Ark of the Covenant or the Ark of God. It was a wooden box covered in gold. Inside there were two stone tablets with the Ten Commandment. Long poles extended along the four corners so that men could carry it from place to place. I want you to pause the video and draw what you think that might look like. How big do you think it was? How many people would it take to carry it? All right, pause the video and start, start drawing. The Ark of the Covenant was important to the Israelites. It was a reminder of God's holiness, power, and presence. Today we're going to hear about a time two men thought they could use the Ark as a kind of good luck charm. Before we watch our video though, let's look at our big picture question again. Ultimately, sin boils down to our doing what we want instead of what God wants. We've discussed before that sin is rebellion against God. The Bible teaches us that sin is serious. What is the fair payment for sin? The fair payment for sin is death. This means that because we are we all are born in sin. We all deserve death, not just physical death, but spiritual death, which means separation from God forever. No good deeds can make up for our sin. Only faith in Jesus saves us from our sins. Now, let's watch today's video. The Israelites had been enemies of the Philistines for many years. One day, the Philistines defeated Israel in a battle. The leaders of Israel asked, why did God let us lose to the Philistines? The Israelites decided huh? to battle again. This time, however, they would take the Ark of the Covenant with them. The Ark of the Covenant was a wooden box covered in gold that reminded them God was with them. Maybe the Ark would help them win. Eli's sons, wicked men who did not respect God, took the Ark of the Covenant to the Israelites' camp. When the army of Israelites saw the Ark, they shouted with joy. Surely they would win the battle now. But when the Philistines came out to fight against the Israelites, the Philistines won again. They killed thousands of Israelites, including Eli's sons, and they captured the Ark of God. One of the Israelites ran to tell Eli what had happened. When Eli heard the news, he fell backward in his chair, broke his neck, and died. The Philistines took the Ark of the Covenant to their temple where they worshipped a false god named Dagon. They put the ark next to a statue of Dagon. The next morning, the Philistines found Dagon's statue face down in front of the ark. They set the statue back up. The next day, the statue was face down again. This time, its head and hands were broken off. God punished the Philistines living in the city where they kept the ark. The people got sick, and they wanted to get rid of the ark. But when the Philistines moved the Ark to another city, everyone in that city got sick. So they moved the Ark to a third city. Then everyone in that city got sick too. The Philistines were afraid. They didn't want God to punish them anymore. So they decided to return the Ark along with gifts of gold to show they were sorry for taking it. The Philistines hitched two cows to a cart and put the Ark on the cart. The cows moved the ark down the road until the ark of God was back with the Israelites where it belonged. The ark of God reminded the Israelites that God was with them. Years later, God gave his people something greater than a sign that he was with them. God gave them his son, Jesus, God in the flesh. One of Jesus' names is Emmanuel, which means God with us. The Israelites and Philistines had been enemies for a long time. God had used Samson to save the Israelites from the Philistines before, and now the Israelites were fighting the Philistines again. But the Israelites were losing. God's promises to the Israelites through Moses were conditional promises. Do you remember them? God promised to fight for his people and give them prosperity and peace if they obeyed God's laws and honored him. Our story today took place during the cycle of the judges. 
The Israelites consistently chose sin and idolatry instead of worshiping God. In fact, look at how the Israelites treated the ark. They didn't say, we need to repent of sin and ask God to fight for us. Instead, they said, let's carry the ark into battle so it'll save us. They were treating the ark as an idol. The ark was a symbol of God's power and holiness, but it wasn't God. No one can put God inside of a box. As a consequence, God allowed the Philistines to defeat the Israelites. The Philistines did not worship the one true God. They worshiped a false God called Dagon. And in those days, whenever one nation defeated another, it was common to carry any idols from the defeated nation and put them in the temple to whichever false god the winning nation worshipped. It was sort of like saying, now your god serves our god, because our god must be stronger. But when the Philistines brought the ark into the temple of Dagon, the statue of Dagon fell face down in front of the ark. Then the Philistines got sick. They had defeated the Israelites, but they hadn't defeated God. When the Philistines realized that the one true God couldn't be controlled by holding the ark, they were eager to give it back to the Israelites. The ark of God reminded the Israelites that God was with them. Years later, God gave his people something greater, a sign that he was with them. God gave them his son, Jesus, God in the flesh. One of Jesus's names is Emmanuel, which means God with us. All right, now let's watch questions from kids. Hi there, I'm Pastor Kevin. It's time for questions from kids. Abigail from Union City, New Jersey asked, Is it ever okay to disobey? Oh, I am glad you asked that question. No, it is not ever okay to disobey. You see, the Bible gives us rules and laws to live by, and the Lord has said that those rules and laws are good for us. They're good for humanity. And your parents have given you rules in the home to live by and to follow. And even at church, there are rules that we have to follow. And school, there are rules that we have to follow. On the playground, there are rules that we have to follow. And even for our extracurricular activities, like maybe playing for a sports team, there are rules that we have to follow. And it is never okay to disobey those rules. Now, rules are in place to keep us and the people that we love and even strangers around us safe. So disobeying those rules could cause you harm. It could cause your family members or friends harm. It could cause people in your community harm. And disobedience is actually not pleasing to God. So we want to remember that we want to be obedient to the things, to the rules that are in place to keep us safe. Now, there's also a yes to that answer. Uh, your parents can explain, your adults around you can explain. There's sometimes that adults, particularly Christian adults, are put in a position and we may be asked to do something that is in opposition to what the scripture tells us to do. And at that time, we say, we are not doing that. And some people refer to that as civil disobedience. Basically saying, the Bible tells me not to do that. And although you're asking me to do that, I am not going to do that. Because I prefer to please God rather than to please man. And that's not always an easy choice. Not for little kids and not for adults. But doing what is biblical is always the best choice. Not always easy, but it is always the best choice. When you pick the biblical response and what God would have us to do, he will always be pleased. And he will also please those who love the Lord. Why do you think God asked us to obey him? Is it ever okay to disobey? Why do you think God asks us to obey him? Eli's sons were disobedient and did not obey God's laws. They did not care what God said. They only wanted to do things their way. Today, we're gonna to learn about a student named Heath who got to travel to Peru to work with missionaries there. We will learn about a man who didn't care what Heath had to say to him. 
At least he didn't care at first. Let's watch our mission video. I'm just a country kid from uh, Monticello, Mississippi. We have one stoplight and a couple of stop signs. If he can use me, he can use anyone. This summer I was able to live out my, my Peruvian cowboy dreams. Uh, we were able to milk cows and cut fields and work with pigs, anything you could think of. Uh, the reason we did all this was to show the people that we love and cared for him, just like Christ does. There was one guy in the fields who said that if we had to come with him twice before he would even listen to any of our stories. So we went with him and uh, we, we cut and worked in the fields with him. We were able to, sh to share the gospel with him and he was open to us because we had built a relationship with him. Why do you think the man wouldn't listen to Heath's stories at first? He wanted to know that they cared about him. He needed help and they were available to help him. Heath didn't need to have special skills or abilities or to be a great cowboy. He just needed to be willing to go to Peru, work hard and tell people about Jesus. We don't need special skills to live on mission either. We just have to be willing to obey God by loving others and sharing the gospel. All right, let's look up our key passage again. It's Romans 6.23. Go get your Bibles. Okay, we're going to start in the table of contents. And Romans is in the New Testament. It's one of my very favorite books. And it is on page 1238 in my Bible. So I'm going to flip towards the back. It's pretty far back there. Still going. It's pretty far back there. All right, there's Romans right there. And we need chapter six. So see the big blue number one? We're gonna find the blue number six. There's two, there's three. There's four, we're almost there. There's five, there's six, see that? Now underneath it, we're gonna look for the tiny number 23. And it looks like it is right here at the very bottom of my page. Do you see the tiny 23? And it says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. We all have sin in our hearts that separates us from God, but God offers us the free gift of salvation. Jesus is the greatest gift. He died in our place for our sins and gives us eternal life. All right, would you pray with me? Lord God, thank you for being with us. Thank you for sending Jesus to be with us. And thank you for inviting us to be with you forever. Amen. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you next week. Bye.